Okay, so hello guys, hello guys. So the same time and welcome to Sporto's live class about the CCIE certification. And so in the last week we talk about the CCIE H1 configuration, and for this week we will talk about the CCIE routine and switch, the troubleshooting one, and we talk about the OSPF part. Okay. So our live class will begin in two minutes. Okay. So in two minutes, we will start the live class about the OSPF. Okay. And so <coughs> before we start the class, uh, first of all, I also need to remind you one thing is uh, if you missed the last week's Sboto's live class about the H1 configuration about the local area network. We just talked about, uh, we just talked about the transform of the logic topology and the physics topology. Actually, it's a very important knowledge. So if you missed the video, you can find us on the Facebook or, or on the YouTube. So you can search us, uh, just to use the words Boto CCI Club on Facebook. And so you can find us, uh, we, our name is Boto CCI Club, and don't forget to follow us. And you can find the recorded videos on our homepage. And also, for the YouTube, you just need to search the Sboto, S-P-O-T-O, it's very simple. It's our name of our company. And you also, don't forget to subscribe us, and then you will find the record videos. And also, we will provide some free videos about the uh, Cisco uh, technology. So don't forget to follow us. Okay. And so this is the first thing. And so next also is a very important. We we are going to talk about the exam. So for this part, you can see that uh, before the change of the Cisco certificate, we still have almost 150 days. We have these days and you have enough time to get your certificate. But we can find us for the exam center. The Actually, the time is very tight and the exam is very, uh, is very narrow snow. And you can find this for these four pictures, just the, uh, the time of the different exam center. And you can find here for this, uh, for the first one, the exam center and with the green color, the date with the green color, it means you can book the exam. And uh, for this red color, it means you can't book the exam and it means it's not the time. Okay, so you can find for this day, for the first center, we can we just have two days to book the exam. And, and also for this, uh, exam center, we have no time to book the exam for this one, four days for this one, there, okay? And uh, so we will find that the uh, the position in the exam center is very busy. So if you want to get the CCA certificate, so you need to book the exam quickly and you need to take the time to book the exam. Okay, so at the end of, the, of this month, uh, uh, September, sorry. At the end of the September, you can book the position. You can book this position of the January. So, uh, at the beginning of the October, you can book the name of the uh, February. Okay. So remember the time. So if you uh, can't find this information or you don't know how to book the exam, you still want to get your certificate. You can use this link to join us supporters. Uh, WhatsApp group. Yeah, this is the WhatsApp group. You can use li this link to join this group and our uh, Sportos teacher will help you to uh, check this information and uh, we will also help you to book the exam. And so we will provide you some exam materials to help you pass the exam. Okay, so if you want to get this information, so you need to join us as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the first two things we need to talk before the live class so it's very important you want to get the certificate you need to book the exam as soon as 
possible. Okay, so use this link to join us and don't forget to follow us. Okay. Okay, so so next we are going to start our today's live class about the OSPF. Okay. Okay, so we wait for maybe two two minutes. We just need to check the network quality is oh, is fine. Okay. Okay, so we just wait for two minutes, so we'll start this this class. Okay, so at first you can, uh, we can see this topology. Okay, we can see this topology, and this topology is the real exam of the troubleshooting one. So this part, we will find the fault of the OSPF protocol, okay? Okay, so at first, you can check your, uh, maybe I can give you uh, one minute to see this topology. So we have, we have one requirement is, if R1 wants to visit this network segment, so I draw it here. So we have a router called R1 here, and uh, we need to let R1 to visit this network segment. And we can find we have two paths to select. For the first one, the path is uh, through R3 and uh, R22. And for the next one is this one, R5 and R22 here. Sorry, this one is 21. So we have these two paths. If you don't change anything, it means we can use these two paths to visit this network segment, maybe it's link N1 network. But for this topology, for this network, the R1 can't use these two paths. It just can use one path. So we need to find the um, force. We need to solve the problems. So this is about the troubleshooting here. So we can take one minute to see this topology. And so we can think, uh, so was it possible to make this force happen, okay? Okay, sorry. Okay, so, uh, sorry for the... Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, so something wrong with our Facebook live class, so I need to uh, restart this live class. Okay, so... I'm sorry for the YouTube. I'm sorry for the YouTube network. Okay, so we will restart it. Okay, so I will repeat the uh, first two one, uh, first two part. Okay. Okay, so first uh, before our be before we start our today's live class, we need to talk about one thing. Is if you missed the uh, last week's live class, you just need to follow us. Okay. Uh, search the CCI Support Club 
on the first Facebook and search photo on YouTube. Okay, and for the this part is the book the exam. If you want to find this information and you want to book the exam, you just use this link to join the WhatsApp group and we will help you to book the exam to find the information. Okay, so. Uh, next, we will start our today's live class about the troubleshooting one and about the OSPF. Okay, for this topology, we can see here we have uh, actually five different routers, and uh, we'll run the OSPF protocol to let different routers to learn the root information to generate the uh, routing table. So we we'll found that if we have R1 here, if R1 was to visit this network segment, maybe it's N1 network segment. So we have two paths to select. The first one is this path, and the second one is this path here. So if this is the normal situation, the R1 can use both these two paths to visit network segment one but maybe something wrong with the ospf protocol maybe when you configure the ospf you do something wrong you do the wrong configuration so we need to find the uh, reason why r1 can't use these two paths to visit network segment one so it means we need to let the r1 can use these two paths it it calls the load balance okay so we need to solve the problems of this topology okay and so next first of all we need to talk about the ospf actually this protocol is very very important and first of all we need to know the routing protocol is used to let the routers can learn the root information can let the routers can generate the routing table and uh, we have the multiple different routing protocols and actually ospf belongs to the dynamic routing protocols and also ospf is the static state link protocol and ospf is the interior gateway protocol okay so first of all we will talk about the working principles of the ospf and we can see here we have different routers here, A, B, C, and uh, the routers will generate the RSA. It's called the link state advertisement. And the RSA will contain the information of the route information and also the, sorry, it's R O U T, the route information and also the top information. So, each router will generate, will flood the RSA so that the router will generate the RSDB. It's called the link state database. And uh, each router will have this link state database. And uh, next, each router will use the algorithm called the SPF algorithm to generate, to calculate the shortest path tree. So for this tree, we'll find this tree without loop is no loop in this tree and also is the shortest path so it's called the shortest path tree and then the router will generate the re the routing information the routing table according to the short path tree actually we have four steps here so first one generate the rsa and uh, build the rsdb and use the SPF algorithm to calculate the short path, shortest path tree and the last one is generate the routing table. So this is the four steps of the OSPF working principle and it's very very important. Okay, so next one we directly see the topology here. So we can find here we have the topology uh, just use our photos cloud uh, lab here, so we can find these two routers is the same with this this topology. Here we can find here uh, these four routers, uh, these five routers. Sorry, and the four these routers first of all, and uh, we need to check the routing table. So this is the first step to check the routing table to to check whether R1 can learn the information or whether R1 can establish the right relationship with the different routers okay so this is the first step and also we have one requirement here for this part it's the output of r1's ospf 
database of the summary RSA, this is the type 3 RSA about this network segment. And we will find here for R1, if we want to achieve the load balance re uh, requirements, it means R1 needs to learn these two same root information from, okay, this R1 needs to learn the same information from R3 and R5. So we can see here from this one, this one is the learned from uh, 123.3.3.33. Uh, it means this router is R3 here. This router the uh, is R3. And for this one, uh, this one learned from 5.5.5. .5. This one is from, it's learned from R5 here. So next we check the IP route here. We will find we have uh, one root information but two different entries with the different next hop and the different out interface. So we find the, the out interface is the two slash zero and one slash zero. So it means this two bus here. So we need to achieve this M. Okay, so first of all, we need to check the information. We need to check the routing table. So first we need to uh, enter the device R1 here. Okay, enter the device R1. And so first of all, we check the routing table here. Okay, sorry. R1. Okay, so... So, first of all, we check the IP route here. So we'll find... Uh, we don't have the root information of this network segment here. We can't learn the root information and we'll find we don't have the root information of the uh, this network segment. Yes. So next we need to check the OSPF neighbor relationship here. So this the uh, first step we check the uh, routing table and then we check the uh, neighbor relationship here. So we need to check that the show IP OSPF neighbor. So we can find here the neighbor relationship between R1 and R3 is right and also between R1 and R5 is right here. So we continue to check it here. So we check the R3. Okay, we can check the R3 here for this device. Okay, and uh, show IPOSPF neighbor. Uh, to check it, so we can find R3 just established the neighbor relationship with R1, but R3 can't establish the neighbor relationship with R221 here. So we will find the problem between R3 and R1 here. They can't establish the Neighbor relationship. Okay, so we try to solve these problems and then we need to check the R21 here. So also we use the same command to check the OSPF. Sorry, check the OSPF neighbor relationship. So show IP OSPF neighbor. So we can find here the R21. Uh, can't establish neighbor relationship with other routers, so we need to check why here. So we use the command the show running, so show running uh, section OSPF to check it. We need to check the configuration of the different uh, routers here. So we, we can find for the R21 here, we find. This is all the configuration of the R21 here. And uh, also, we need to check the R3 here. Uh, just use the same command. I just copy this command here. It's the same command. Okay, so check this one. And so we will find here, we have one key point here. R3, we, we, we change the hello interval. The hello interval is 11 here. So you can see it here. And so I have one question. 
what's the default high interval of the OSPF protocol? So we have uh, one question here, the default hollow interval. So maybe I think most of you, most of you can know this, 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 this answer, yes. So we know here that default hollow interval of the uh, OSPF is 10 here. So if you change the hollow interval of R3 here, it means it can't establish the neighbor relationship with R21 here. So this the point knowledge, this is the key point knowledge we need to know here. So for this one, if we want to use the OSPF protocol, it means we need to let the two routers can establish the neighbor relationship normally. So the routers will use the hollow packet, and this packet is very important. This packet. Actually, this packet has three different functions. The first one, the packet is used to find the neighbors. Okay, we need to use the hollow packet to find the neighbors. We know that the destination of the hollow packet is broadcast, and uh, this is the first function. And then the second function of the hollow packet is we need to let the hollow packet to establish the neighbor relationship. So we want two routers Two routers use the hollow packet to establish the neighbor relationship. So need they need to uh, is negotiate some parameters. So we can find here they need to negotiate these parameters. The first one the router ID. So they need to they can't have the same router ID. Yes, and then next one is the hollow and dead intervals. So the default value of the hello packet in the broadcast network is the 10 seconds. And for the data interval, so it's the four times of the hello interval. So it's the 40 seconds here. So actually it's the question. We can't change the hello interval to 11. Okay, so actually we'll find the next parameters is the neighbors, error ID, and the road priority, and the uh, designated router, the backup designated router IP address, and also the authentication password, so, and the stop error flags. So this point will affect the establish of the neighbor relationship. So we find the first one is the hello interval. So we need to change the hollow interval to the default value, okay? So we're back to the exam and the chat and uh, change the hollow interval. Okay, for this one, and the R3 here, we check R3, and we need to change the hollow interval is the interface, interface E to the slash one, and change the hollow interval is IPOSPF, hollow interval is 10 here, okay? Let's stay here. So next, we're trying to find the neighbor relationship. So I show IP OSPF neighbor. So we can find that these two routers still can't establish the neighbor relationship. Yes. So we go back to the R21 here. So we go back to these routers to find why. Okay, for this one, we can find here, actually, we have one command here, it's called the passive interface default. And uh, then we have one command called no passive interface default E2 slash 1. It means this interface is not the passive interface, but this one is still the passive interface. So also it's a key point here. So we're back to the PowerPoint here. And for this part here, we will find if we have two routers here, and these two routers will run the OSPF protocol. And for the two routers, we'll exchange the OSPF packet to establish the relationship, to learn the uh, information, to synchronize the database. Yes. So it means this interface and this interface, we can't set it to the passive interface. But this one, we found our one, we use the F0 slash 0 to connect the PC. So the router don't, doesn't need to use uh, this 
interface to send or receive the OSPF packet. So we can configure this inf interface to the passive interface. So we can find this command, the passive interface F0 slash 0. But if you config maybe, uh, sorry, I remove the, okay, I erase, to erase it and uh, for this one. If you config this one to the passive interface, it means it can't send or receive the OSPM packet so that these two routers can't establish the neighbor relationship normally. Okay, so we we'll go back to the topology and uh, change it. Okay, so this one. Okay, to this one. We need to remove the uh, G0 slash 0, this interface from the passive interface. So we back to this one and this one. And we need to remove this. Uh, so it's no passive interface e there slash there. Okay, to remove this command and then we can check it. The do show IP OSPF neighbor. Okay, so we will find here the R21 can establish the neighbor relationship with R3 here. Okay, so. First of all, we saw the problem. R3 and R21 can't establish the relationship. So we solve this problem. So next, we're going to check the R1's routing table. So we go back to R1 to check the routing table. So go back to R1 and to check it, show IP route. So we go back to this one. We will find we still can't learn the root information. Yes, we still can't learn the root information. So we go back, we go to R5 and R22 to find why. So we uh, first go to this one. Okay. CIC. And then we use the command through IP root here. So we'll find for this one, for these routers, it can learn the root information about the point is the, this point, we can check the topology here. Uh, of this point, sorry, of this one, this is the network segment, the 78.48 here. This is the destination network segment. Okay, so here we check the information of the R file here. Okay, and so next we check the IP uh, OSPF neighbor. So we can check the neighbor here. And we find the neighbor relationship is fine. The neighbor relationship is fine. So we can directly check the uh, configuration of the OSPF. So we show run the running configuration of the section of the OSPF here. OSPF. Uh, so we find actually the configuration is the same, but one thing is one thing is very important. We have another command called the show IP OSPF interface brief here. So after we do this configuration, we can find the information, the network type of R5 is uh, are all the broadcast network time. So we went to the R22 here. Also use this command to check it. 22 here. So for these routers, let's see. Sorry, sorry. Okay, use this command. So we have found here a very important knowledge is this interface the e0 slash 0 and the stat is point to point here so it means this network type is 
point to point but this one is the broadcast and uh, actually we back to the powerpoint here sorry and for this one actually for the OSPF protocol it can support four different network types here it can support four different the first one is the broadcast and this one MA means the broadcast and uh, the next one is the non-broadcast it means nbma is the nbma network actually this network is the uh, flame relay and also the atm network is called A nbma and also if you if you use the serious interface so it will be used the power uh, the point to point protocol and also we have another network protocol called the point to multiple points so OSPF can support this four different network type here so we will find here for this one for this one if you just uh, so we're back to the topology here so remember this the OSPF can support this four different network type so we're back to the topology here for this topology for this topology, if you configure the, this interface to the power to point, but you configure this interface R5 E1 slash 0 to uh, broadcast, these two routers can establish the neighbor relationship normally, but it can't learn the routing information normally. Okay, so this is the key point. We will find the neighbor relationship between the R22 uh, and uh, R5 is, is, is normal. So we can find they can establish a neighbor relationship, but they can't learn the root information normally. So we need to change the network type of the this interface. Okay? So we use the command enter this interface is SS1 and uh, use the command the IPOSPF network sorry the network type network is the broadcast okay so we change it to the broadcast so uh, this is the first force of this configuration the first one is between the uh, r3 and r21 the ospf neighbor relationship can't established uh, can't establish but for these two routers the neighbor the network type is not the same so we change them to the same one okay so after we change this fault so next we go back to the so we need to go back to the r1 to check the routing table here so we go back to r1 here also we check the routing table okay so we can find here after we check these two faults here we can learn the root information of this network segment but we find something wrong here yes you can find this the requirement is so we go back to the requirement you can find this the requirement network segment with the mask length is 29 here the mask length is 29 but for our configuration here we're back to r1 you can find the mask length is 30 here so you can think why so it means we must config one interface lens mask lens to 30 here so we make a very uh it's a very easy uh fault yes it's very easy and it's very low level so we just configure the wrong mask lens so we need to find which interface okay so also we can also find one router is very strange here so we will find this network segment actually we can find it's very similar to this one but the mask length is 24 here yes so we go back to the topology we go back to topology so we can find here all the network segment of this topology is 30 or 29 we we don't have the network 
uh, segment with the mask length um, 24 here. So we don't have this network segment. So it means we must do the summarization of some routers. Yes, we must summarize different network segments to this one. Okay, so we must do the different summarization to this one to the length of 24. So we need to find this. Okay, so uh, we can find here for this one we learned it, this network information from E1 slash 1 here. So we will find the R1. We use this one connected to R3 here. So it means R1 learns this summarization uh, network segment from R3 here. So we check R3 here. We check all the configuration of R3. Okay, so I use the command the show running section OSPF. Sorry. Okay, so we can find here. So this is all the configuration of R3. Maybe there's no mistakes. Yes, there's no mistakes. So we go to R21 here. So we go to R21 and use the same configuration. Sorry, let's check it. R21 here. Use the same configuration. Do show run as OSPF. Okay, so we can change here. So we will. Uh, sorry. So we can find this. This configuration is also the right, no mistake, but for R3 here, so we made a mistake. Okay, so we can find this command, this command, the error one runs uh, with this network segment uh, 78.0 with the mask length is 24 here. So we will find this network segment, we learned it from R1 here. So is the network segment so we can't do the summarization here so we need to remove it okay so we can back to the powerpoint to check this knowledge here so this is called the summarization and we can find here maybe for our error one we have rotor one here and the rotor one have this network uh entries and the range from the 8.0 to 90.0 and we can find this network information is very similar so we can summarize this different network segment to the one network segment it calls the summarization so it can reduce the size of our routing table okay so it can reduce the size and also it can reduce the uh, Okay, if the maybe so I give you an example. If the this network is broken down, so it means the R1 needs to cancel the this that segment to R RTB here. So maybe the next second this network segment is uh be, it's become normal so that the RTA will send this information to RTB again. So it means the First second RTA wants to cancel the network segment, but the next second the RTA will uh, send the information of this net of this network segment. So it will influence our network. So the, we have two advantages of the summarization. The first one reduce the size of the routing table. The second one we can reduce the influencing of our routing table. Okay, so this is the two advantages, and uh, so for this topology, if we want to solve the problems, we can't do the summarization of R3 here, so we need to remove this command. Okay, so we back to the R3 and remove this command. Okay, so the OSPF and the no, this command, remove it, okay? Okay, remove it. So after we remove this command, we go back to R1 here to find whether we solve its problems. We go back to R1 here, so we can find here. We can't find this network segment. Yes, this one we can't find it. I think. Yes, we can't find this net segment. So actually, for this problem, we still have this. Yes, we have one 
root information with the mask length is 30 here, but the requirement is the 29. So this one is okay, yes. This one is okay, but this one is wrong. So we need to find which interface with the wrong mask length. Okay, so we go to find this one. Okay, so for R5 here, so we just go back to R5 because R1 learns this is interface, uh, sorry, R1 learns this routing information from E2 slash 0. So we need to find it of R1, R file here. So we go back to R file and check the IP address. We need to check the IP address. So we use the command to show IP. So IP OSPF interface E0 slash 0. Yes. First we check this one and actually it's uh sorry this 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 r file if you check this you need to ensure that r file has this network segment so you can find actually r file we can't have the this this uh, network segment so this network segment exists in r22 here so you need to check the r22 directly we don't need to check the r file okay so we go to the r22 here and check it uh, sorry. So IP OSPF interface E2 slash there. So we can find here for this one, this network segment is our destination network segment, and we configure the wrong mask length, and also it can cause the R22 can't establish the neighbor relationship with R21 so we need to check this okay so we just need to enter the interface E sorry E2 slash 1 and use the command R IP address is this one I just need to copy it uh, sorry is this one I just copy it and the mask class is 200, 255, 255, and 248 is the mask length. Okay. So we remove this mistake. And so after we remove it, we need to go back to the R1 again. So, okay. We're back to the R1 again and check it. Okay. So IP root. So we will find finally we can have the root information here, but for this network segment, we just have one network segment. Yes, it's this one, but the metric is, uh, the mask length is right, it's 22 here, but the metric is 30 here. Okay, the metric is 30, so. Okay. Okay, so we need to find why we can't have the two same paths to go to this net network segment so we still need to check it okay so we can just use the uh, command the show ip osp we need to check the database the database summary the summary rsa just this one here so we can find here we can find here for this database, we can learn this summary RSA from R3 and R5 here. But we have one question is the routing information learned from R3 with the metric is this one, 6555545. And this metric is too large. So that if R1 learns two root information with the same destination IP address, but this one is metric is 20, this one is is so large yes so that the R1 will select this one actually so we will find for this part we configure the mask metric so we need to find where okay so we need to go back to R3 and R21 here to check all the configuration so we can check here the configuration of R3 actually is the same here yes it's the same and we need to check the R22 here Okay, we check the R22 and we can find this command here. 
It's called the mask metric root RSA. It means when R21 sends the RSA to R3, it will set the mask metric. So it means why the R1 will learn the, the root information with the mask metric. So we need to remove this command. Okay, so just use the command no metric root RSA. Yes, we just need to remove it. And so we need to back to the R1 here. Just use the same command to check the database. So finally, we can find this. I think we are going to success to solve these problems. Yes, because we learned the two routing. Uh, actually, it's the two summary RSA with the same information just from the different routers. And we can find the network segment is the same and the, the mask is the same and the metric is the same. So I think we are going to success. So finally, we need to check the routing table here. So I so so IP root. So oh no, we can find it one routing entry, and this one is the this one the destination segment with the right mask. But the metric we can find something wrong with the metric because the metric is the R one needs to have two same routing entries with the metric 30 yes with the metric 30 so the default value is the 10 so it means the 20 add 10 the value is 30 but for the uh, routing table we have the routing entry with the 21 here yes with the 21 so we can find this routing entry we learned it from e0 slash 1 here Yes, e one slash zero. Sorry, one slash zero, and the next hop is this one. So it means we we change the metric of the this interface. Yes, it means we change the metric of interface. So we need to remove the metric. So we just need to show run or show run. Sorry, interface one slash. We need to check the configuration of this one. So we can find here, we, ch we change the cost, IP cost, cost 1. So we need to change this. Command is 10 here. So config and interface e one slash 0 and the IP OSPF cost is 10. Okay, finally, we, I think we can solve the problems. We can meet the requirements. So good luck to us. And so last one, we check the IP route. Yes. Okay, so finally, I think we are successful to meet the requirements. So we can find we have one routing information with the network segment with the right mask length, and uh, we have two different next hop and uh, two different out interface, and these two paths are the same. So we finally meet the requirement, and so. Actually, we can use the command to check it, the IPOSPF database summary and for this one. Okay, is this one here? So this is all the information here. So we can check it here. For the output, actually is the same. The database is the same. Yes, for this one, you can compare this, actually is the same. For this one, the database is the same with this part. Is this one is the same, and also we can change the we can change the routing routing table here. The routing table of this one actually it's also the same here. Okay, it's also the same. We can use this command. So just the so IP root. So we can find these two information are the same. So we are successful to meet the demand. Okay. So finally, we we'll solve the problem. So we can do a summarization here. First one, first of all, you need to check the routing table of R1 to find whether R1 can learn the root information. So we can find R1 can't learn it. So next, 
the second step, we need to check the neighbor relationship of each routers. Okay, this is the second step. Check the neighbor relationship. So we find that. So you use this topology. So, so for the second step, we find that R22 can't establish the neighbor relationship is R3. So we find we check the how interval of this interface. We need to fix it. Okay, and uh, then also we change. We set this interface to the passive interface, so we need to remove the command so that the R22 can establish the neighbor relationship with R3 normally. So, okay, next we go back to check the R1's routing table. We found we still can't to learn the root information, so we can find for R5 and R22 here, these two routers, we use the different network type. So that we need to configure these two routers has the same different network type. Okay, so this is the third step. And for the first step, we also go back to R1 and to find that we can learn the destination segment, but the mask length is the different. For R1 routing table, the mask length is 30 here. The requirements is 29. So we find the R22 this interface we configure the wrong mask length so we change the mask length of this interface to 29 and then R22 can establish the, the right relationship with, with R21 so actually we we, res, we remove this uh, configuration we, we check the configuration and then we go back to R1 to change the routing table and then we will find that the R1 learns the root information from R3 with the mask metric. So we find we configure the mask metric of the R22 here. We need to remove this command and then we find R1 still think uh, it's just like one pass from R3 to R21 because we just changed the cost of this interface. So we need to change it to the default code or you can change it to one, but is different from the output here so need you need to change this one to the turn here so that we finally solve all the problems okay so this is the all the configuration about the troubleshooting one the OSPF part so I hope all of you can understand the knowledge of this uh, different faults the hollow packets the neighbor relationship the summarization the uh, mask metric and the and the next one is the uh, cost. So I think uh, I hope all of you can understand this one and I can just show you the configuration of the troubleshooting. And actually for this part is the real exam in the CCIE certificate. It's the real exam. If you try to get the a certificate uh, in your next time so maybe you, you if you are lucky enough to choose the H1 the TS1 you will find this one is the same with this topology okay so I hope if you uh, if you want to get your certificate you can choose you can uh, when you when you are in the exam you can have this uh, this part okay so that's all for our today's live class and uh, uh, at the end of our live class so I need to remind remind all of you don't forget to follow us so I repeat it because Smooth will continue to pro provide the free live courses so just like this one I will still I will always to teach you some uh, real configuration of the real exam so you, you can find it's very useful in our supporters live class so don't forget to follow us and you still have 104 uh, 54 days to get your certification and uh, actually uh, you, you need to use this link use this link to join our supporters whatsapp group because we will tell you some information of the uh, exam center, we, we will tell you how to book the exam because the time is very tight and the exam center is very 
uh, the debt is very busy here, it's very tight. And uh, also, uh, our supposal have the real exam material, just like this part we just talked about for this one. The, it, this is the real exam material. So if you want get your own certificate before the change of the Cisco Next Level certificate, you can use this link to join us and find the exam material. Okay, use this link to join us and uh, we can provide your service of the exam. Our, our teacher will help you to do a plan and uh, pass the exam before the change. Okay, so uh, one thing is very important here. So if you try to um, join us and uh, to buy our service, you you need to join this group because you need to ensure it's our supporter because in the network, uh, someone is trying to pretend to be the supporter. It's not us. It's just, uh, uh, it, if you pay the money to these guys, it won't provide you the uh, exam materials. It's very dangerous. Yes. So ne you need to ensure it's our official support uh, staff. It's our official support WhatsApp group. So just use this link to join us. Okay. This, this thing is very important. Uh, before you buy the service, you need to contact us at first. Okay. So just use this link. And then for our supporters, we will also provide you some other information. We have three different links here. The, uh, supporterclub.com, uh, supporter.net, and supporter.info here. So for these three different websites, we will uh, provide some free information of the uh, Cisco technology about the routing and switch and also about some uh, different uh, different technology and also we will provide you some information of the of the Cisco certificate and also uh, I think it's very useful so you can use these two three different websites to find the information uh, of the Cisco and also find the information of our support also okay so don't forget these three different websites and so the last one is also we have uh, the blog here for this website we have the blog here and uh, its blog will provide you some more information okay okay so guys uh, that's all for our today's uh, live class and so for this class we talk about the this part is the real exam of the TS1 so in the next week the same time the same time so we will talk about another uh, real a part of the CCIE certificate. Okay, so for us, don't miss the live class. Okay, so thank you very much for today's live class and bye-bye. Uh,